Now, when did you ever expect to see this thing inside the shop? The original backyard Alaskan yard truck. She does all the work around here and, you know, basically gets neglected and then whatever breaks on it, you just compensate for rather than fix it. So, you know, we've got it inside the shop here to uh, address a couple of the little issues that it has. I mean, it, it doesn't need much or anything like that, but... Don't worry, Captain, we'll buff out those scratches. Don't let this thing strike in good looks fool you or anything like that because... It's actually a multi-purpose yard truck. I mean, this thing goes from anything to being a boom truck to a wrecker. And you know, sometimes uh, stuff like uh, winter rallies. Drag racing. Brutal cold starts. This truck though, she just does it all around here. And uh, actually it's been in this shop one other time and that's the time that I uh, you know, I kind of rallied it a little too hard in the snow and kind of blew the transfer case up. So yeah, the last time it was in here, I swapped another transfer case into it and it's been good ever since. So we just got it back in here to address a few more little things. And also, fun fact, I've always wanted to investigate what happened um, it's probably been like four or five years now, but it was in the middle of a snowstorm, a big tree fell across the driveway, and I thought, what better tool to go deal with that than, you know, this. So, I rallied it through the snow. There was quite a bit of snow during that snowstorm. And, you know, I kind of just blew the front diff right out of it, and I lost four-wheel drive ever since then. It probably didn't have anything to do with the front end being absolutely worn out, or the fact that I was running a super extremely bent front drive shaft in it. Nah. But anyways, haven't had four wheel drive ever since. And so that just resulted in the rear getting chained up. And now it just gets abused even more with without four wheel drive. And uh, it's a little less capable now, of course. But she still still gets the jobs done, so can't complain but anyways something went wrong in the front axle i'm assuming in the differential and i've never pulled the front cover off to see you know just what kind of carnage happened in there so i think just for fun for video purposes we're going to pull that front cover off and just see what uh, happened in there because i've been curious all this time but also way too lazy to care about it so we're just gonna you know accomplish everything in this video so that's great and then uh, on top of that, let's see. Oh, um, something is, you know, actually wrong in there enough to make the truck want to bind up and not move right now. So I think uh, now's a good time to look. So why not? Because, uh, well, I was using this thing the other day and it felt like the front end was binding up or it felt like something in the transmission or the transfer case, but I'm very doubtful on those two. Even though I probably haven't ever checked the fluid on the four speed, but that's a mere detail. So anyways, we're gonna check the, uh, the front differential situation and maybe that's what's causing it to bind up and not wanna move because, uh, well, you see this side has a locking hub and that side has a full-time hub. So I can unlock this side, but that side is still engaged. So if something's all screwed up in the differential and it's wanting to bind and that axle shaft is wanting to spin, well, that could be part of our problem. But uh, besides that, I think I'm gonna, you know, actually treat this thing somewhat good for once for how much it does for me. So I've got uh, brand new spark plugs to throw in it. 
and we're gonna do an oil change on it at the same time because last time I did an oil change was probably like four years ago something like that and uh yeah we'll just treat her to uh, a little bit of you know tiny bit of maintenance because uh I think the last tune-up I did on this truck was put like five different carburetors on it that were all junk except the last one that uh kind of works good enough and let's see what else oh yeah the last tune-up consisted of me just pulling the old spark plugs out and wire wheeling them and then i broke the porcelain on one of them and threw an even more ancient spark plug in there like one of the old ac green and white ones and uh she's been rocking those ever since so i don't know i think she deserves some new spark plugs good old 360 fe you just can't beat them and yeah there's that ac spark plug right there so yeah we'll just uh get all those switched out to the new ones auto light 45s and those should be good and you're gonna want to just squint not only for safety in case you get something in your eye but also to avoid noticing all the leaks all over the motor including the coolant leak out the radiator i mean it's cold weather now you don't even need coolant so you know just mere little details such as that and if you follow the course of action of squinting you don't notice them so it's fine oh and i'm sure that exhaust leak is good it's an fe it's supposed to have that had that from the factory so anyways enough rambling we'll get some work done get spark plugs changed out and change the oil and then we'll dive into the front end and see what kind of carnage happened in that well got all eight spark plugs changed out so we're all brand new matched and ready to rumble there of course i checked the gap on each spark plug before installing it i just quickly glanced at it and put it in because i want this thing to be on top of its game for the next drag race i have with just a car addict because well you see he kind of smoked me the first go around so can't be having none of that again we've got to uh compete with a dodge charger here and all so as soon as i get done with all this work she's gonna go on the dyno and we're just gonna fine tune it out she'll be ready to go i mean there's a lot of science going on the tire chains the uh the boom sticking up in the air the the mirrors hanging out there's a lot of aerodynamics to this race machine so i mean it's got to go on the dyno and just get figured out to give myself the upper hand so you know next time you want to race i'll be ready all right now for the oil change operation we've got the drain plug rounder offer flashlight all the necessities officially drip season now the same rule pertains to underneath the truck you're just gonna want to squint a lot not look at anything oh wow that that yoke's been repaired that's pretty cool anyways under here and we'll just go ahead and round this right off just get started with that right away and then we'll be good oh yeah a little bit of an impact rounder offer and we'll be fine here we gotta see how bad this stuff is like you know just set our lighting up here for optimal camera viewage guaranteed to hit the exhaust pipe and go everywhere oh yeah that's she's pretty good pretty ripe pretty optimal so we'll let that do its thing and ignore everything else got it yep we'll be good while we're done draining the oil let's just grab a hold of the yoke on the front differential and we'll see what it does oh i think that's fine oh yeah she's good definitely sounds nice and healthy what else is worth looking at under here as far as that goes i'd just call that dust control and uh 
here's an old blast from the past right here when i got this truck going i uh i didn't have brakes and none of the rear brakes were intact so i just blocked them off with a uh a yamaha bravo fuel line and stuck a screw in there with uh, rtv on it and called it good and it's held up fine ever since she's just uh, running front brakes only right now and it works great i mean there's no problem so everything looks good under here looks uh good for another 50 years so we'll go up top and fill her up with fresh oil and then we'll dive into that front end well topped up with oil do a little test run here see how she likes those spark plugs and uh also i cleaned up the points they were a little corroded i haven't messed with those since like 2017 when i put them in so not too bad oh yeah She's a little rich with that 500 CFM on there, but she loves life. It's a good truck. A little smoky in here. No big deal. We like the aroma of this stuff. Let's see what kind of nightmare we can unfold. That's a lot of water, that's neat. Oh yeah. It's like I never checked any of the fluids in this truck ever since I loaned it. Maybe that's why it blew up. Well, you could say I'm kind of surprised because I would have fully expected the spider gears to be blown apart into a million pieces and rolling around in here binding things up. But uh, surprisingly, everything appears to be intact. Like, there's not any broken teeth that I can see or anything like that. Of course, we'll grab the yoke and try and spin it around and see what else we can discover. But, you know, I would have expected a lot more carnage in here than this. Now, we do have a fair amount of sludge and uh, all that good stuff in it. And, uh, you know, there was like just water and the severe lack of gear oil, obviously. But uh, that just proves that, you know, checking your fluids when you get a truck and start using it is, you know, overrated. Like, I forbide this thing pretty hard and uh, did a lot of work with it until, uh, you know, it quit working. So we're here conducting differential science. We did that last winter on the 69 High Boy where uh, I tested the durability on a Dana 70 axle shaft. So we're testing the durability on a Dana 44 differential now. So, you know, conducting science here, we're going to go ahead and clean this all out, discover what is in that sludge, and I'm going to break clean this all out and lube it up. And maybe this will come back around because that'd be pretty cool. So we're going to see what we can make happen. Well, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, that's really nice. You know, a little glittery, but that's no big deal. You don't gotta worry about any of that. There's still a little bit of gear oil in there. Oh, that's, that's a lot of water too. Helps with cooling. You know, if uh, it didn't have the cooling factor to it. Oh, there's a chunk. If it didn't have the cooling factor to it, we would have totally roasted this thing completely. I don't know what that is. You're just going to throw it away and ignore it. Check it out. I got this side jacked up so we can rotate it around because this is the side with the full-time hub. And uh, we can do that. Oh, 
yeah, she sounds great, huh? Check this out. That's all wheel bearing. Maybe I should do something about that, but you know, probably won't. Well, you know, I brake cleaned it out a little bit and then hosed it all down with WD-40. And I've just been rotating it around. Sounds pretty crunchy, but I mean, crunchy's good when you want full engagement on your, you know, ring gear teeth and everything and pinion teeth. So, you know, I think we've got that to our advantage. Now, uh, let's check some bearing tolerances. Oh yeah, I think that's fine. Perfectly good. Well, got the boom truck out of the shop. We kind of jumped ahead and skipped over some stuff, but I kind of scratched my whole idea on making the front differential work marginally. Um, I messed around with it some more and I found out that the relationship between the ring gear and the pinion gear are not all that great anymore. Now, the teeth look fine visibly, but the engagement between the two is not so good because, uh, as you probably recall, when we were turning the yoke, before we even open that thing up, it, it kind of skips. So uh, without correcting that with, you know, all new stuff and bearings and everything, uh, once, you know, a, a front drive shaft was put back in it and power is applied to that, it's just going to skip and not, you know, engage right and work properly. So I don't know why waste the time to uh, weld it up and do all that stuff that I was going to do. So anyways, uh, basically what I did was I took that uh, full-time hub off, I took the cap off, and I looked in there and I shook the wheel to uh, because I thought that all that play was, you know, like the spindle nut had just backed off. They like to do that. And no, the, the spindle nut was perfectly tight. The entire spindle moves. So what I did was, uh, I didn't go any further or correct that at all. What I did was I just took the slug out for the full-time hub and left it out and put the cap back on. So now that hub won't be engaged in trying to turn stuff in the differential and bind up and stop the truck from moving. So the other side is unlocked and now this side is taken out. So we've just got freewheeling uh, front end now. So should be fine for now. As far as uh, the whole spindle and everything moving, then, well, we'll just we'll just find out the hard way when things fall apart and it hits the ground. So, uh, yeah, other than that, that's about all I did. She, uh, she definitely runs better uh, with the new plugs and all that stuff. I ended up cleaning up the points, too. They were actually corroded, but, uh, yeah, just improved the thing a little bit. It needed an oil change anyway. Might as well treat it good in some areas. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. And till the next video, I'll see you guys later.